of the things that is essential, essential for me being not just a Google Classroom user, but a Google user in general is knowing how to filter my Gmail. When I'm able to filter my Gmails, I'm able to take control of how my email looks and I get huh, so much more peace in my life. This is an essential skill you have to know about filters and how Gmail works. So I'm going to switch over to this account that I do not use. Um, I'm going to run through these slides really quick. So I'm not really sure what's in the Gmail because I don't want to show my email things in this recording. So we're going to see how that goes. But the setting up of the filters will be the same regardless. What we're going to be looking for, this is brand new. And this is really kind of what prompted saying, hey, let's do this webinar is this little symbol here. It used to be a little tiny drop down arrow. And now it is this filter icon. You're going to see this same filter icon in Google Drive. So in Google Drive and in Gmail, up in the search bar, you're going to see the filters. You want to click on that so you can either filter in Google Drive or in this particular case, we specifically are filtering in Gmail. Okay, so now once you click that filter, it gives you all of these options for what do you want to filter for. And I'd like to point out that when you just type into the search and you search for something, it searches the entire email, the body of the email, as well as the subject line. If you want to search only the subject line, which I think is really a key thing to do, you want to make sure that you move it from has the words. Has the words will search the subject line, but it also searches the entire email body. So you want to make sure that you select specifically that you want to search in the subject line. You can also say, hey, I get emails from my principal. Those are really important. I don't want to miss them. So you put their email in that top line to say it's from so-and-so. You can have more than one filter criteria. You can say, I want emails from my boss that mention yard duty. So uh, then put that in the subject line. So you want to get all of the yard duty emails specifically into one folder. So go ahead and set up any of the requirements that it's something that's an email that's recent, that it has or it doesn't have an attachment. Most of the time, I'm really looking at what's in the subject line is how I set up my filters or who the email is from is how I set up my filters. Now, in this case, you want to click on create filter. And it's tricky because like we're like muscle memory trained to click on that blue search button. And though I don't want you to click on the blue search button, that blue search button is temporary. This is something we want to be ongoing. So you're going to click on create filter. Creating filter will bring you to the list of, uh, well, the first thing was the criteria. These are what happens, the list of actions of what happens when an email meets that criteria. So do you want to skip the inbox? For example, late work. I don't want to see the late work notifications from Google Classroom. Let's just skip the inbox. I can mark it as red, I can star it, I can apply a label. A label is a folder. Let's pause on that for a second. A label is a folder. And so this is really the primary way that you're going to filter your email. You can certainly filter it in other ways, but mostly I think about getting it out of my inbox and putting them into folders automatically so I can manage them when I'm ready. You can forward it to another email address. So any emails that come in for this particular purpose get forwarded to a different email. You can just delete it. Like, I don't want to see any of these. So for example, I get a lot of document requests. I make a lot of templates. And I share out a lot of things. And you should make a copy of them. You should make a copy. Well, some people will accidentally put request edit access. There's a big button. It's really big. And it makes people feel like they're supposed to click on it. And so they, I get a lot of these emails that request edit access. Well, I'm not going to give you edit access to my templates person I don't know. Uh, these are literally just strangers on the internet. And it's, I got 45 of them yesterday. 45. You can imagine how annoying that is in my inbox is to get all of these uh, requests. So I set up a filter that if it says request edit access and it's from, Google, you know, the, the Google Docs requests, that it just deletes it. So I just never even see them. They just go straight to my trash. Uh, I just don't have time for that. <laughs> right? Do I want to never go to spam? So you, you had asked Lauren about parents getting emails to spam. They can set up a filter that if any email is from 
Lauren, it would never go to spam. And I'm going to sneeze and I apologize. Yeah, there it is. That's what happens when I sit outside to do my webinars. Lovely Kansas wind brings in some pollen. Um, you can send a template. A template, actually, I'm not even sure if yours would say that, send template, because I have some advanced settings to allow me to do canned templates that I can have pre-created messages that I can use. That's a whole, canned templates is a whole different thing. So anyway, I can use one of those pre-designed emails. I can always mark it as important. I can never mark it as important. I can categorize it. I don't use the categories because I use pri um, priority inbox. I use priority inbox, um, but it the default for Gmail accounts is the categories where it has the tabs along the top for advertisements and, and these particular things. So if um, if you're not using, if you are using the, the default, then that would actually be very helpful. And I recommend that whatever you do, you always check the last checkbox, which says apply it to all the matching conversations. And then, then you can click the blue button to create a filter. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead into this Gmail account of an account that I don't use. So I don't even know what emails are in here. All right, here we go. Apparently, I'm supposed to be filling out some health forms. Uh, there's many of them. So let's let's start with this one. It says, please fill out the health form. Why does this person ask me 5,000 times to fill out a health form? Look at this. It's in here again. In seven, this is quite bizarre. This person really, really, really wants me to fill out this health form. So let's take a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select a checkbox for this email. And I'm going to, let me do this slowly. Do you see the three dots menu? The three dots menu up at the top when I've selected it. It allows me to choose filter messages like these. Filter messages like these. I wasn't going to start here, but then when I... Notice that I have this one particular message that's unbelievably annoying. Like, why is she wanting me to 5,000 times fill out this health form? I'm going to filter messages like these. You'll see that it pre-populates their email. This is interesting. So what do I want to have happen when I get an email from this person? I'm going to go ahead and create, create filter. I'm going to click on create filter. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to choose a label. Now, I don't have any labels, so I'm going to choose a new label. So I'm going to create it right here on the spot. And I'm going to call this Reminders. And I'm going to click Create. So now I have a folder called Reminders. And then what I'm going to do, when oops, new label. Reminder, I thought I selected it. Reminders, Create. Oh, I can't use reminders. Aha. That's interesting. Um, notification. Okay, so now I have a label called notification. But actually, you know what? I want this to be a subfolder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it again and do a new label. And I'm going to call this stuff. I'm going to label it under notification so that that allows me, and I'll show you in a second, I'm going to nest it under notifications. So you can make folders in folders. So what I did first is I made a folder, the, the label. I made a label. And then I'm like, just joking. That wasn't the label I wanted. I want this label. And so you can actually keep coming back here and choosing new label and continue to create these folders in folders if you would like to. And you should see this over here on the very left-hand side. Do you see how it now says notification and stuff? That wasn't there a minute ago. I just now created it. So I'm going to apply the label. I wanted to skip the inbox. I wanted to skip the inbox. And I want to apply this filter to matching conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and create this filter. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Um, 
Okay, here we go. What is happening? You see when I clicked on, I see what was happening. It was populating the 303 emails this woman has sent me. Um, I'm unsure why. So 303 emails were now removed from my inbox and put into this label or this folder on the side. And as I predict that I would continue to receive these, they are going to be put into that folder, into that filter. So over there on that left-hand side, you're going to see that's where your labels are. Now that's great, uh, but I tend to, I'm going to come up here to the settings. I'm going to go to settings, and I'm going to go see all settings. And I want to go to filters and blocked addresses. And you see that I have a filter now in here that was created that I already did. I can create a new filter if I would like. I'm going to create a new filter. And I can make them from here. But you'll notice what it just did when I did it from the settings. It's actually popped it down from the search bar at the top because that's where your filters really are. So you don't need to create your filters in the settings, although you could, as I just showed, really what I'm doing by going to settings, settings cog, and I go to see all settings, but I, and I click on filters, I can delete the filter, right? I can get rid of that filter. Now over here, also in the settings, you'll notice that it says labels. Remember, label is a folder. A folder is a label. And so what I can do down here, I've got my labels. I can scroll to create new label. So I'm going to create a new label, and I'm going to call it classroom. Now I'm going to come back to the inbox. I'm going to click on the filter icon up in the search bar at the very top and click on that filter icon. And I'm looking for added a private comment. I believe that's what it says. That when there's a private comment on a Google Classroom assignment, it says added a private comment to the subject line. I'm going to create a filter. I have six private comment emails. What do I want it to do? I want to star it. If, they, if a student sends me a private comment, I do not want to miss it. So I star it. I'm going to choose the label. I want it to be classroom. But I'm actually going to create a new label. I'm going to say new label. I'm going to call it private comments. And I'm going to nest it under classroom. Okay. And then I know this sounds weird, but I never mark it as important because I start it. So the problem I have in a different email account that I did is I accidentally forgot to never mark them as important. So all of my boss's emails are starred and marked as important, which means my boss's emails are mixed in with all my important emails anyway, and then they don't stick out. What I'm looking for is for them to be in a starred category where I see them special and separate. So I don't want it to be starred and important. I just want it to be starred, and I'll explain that. And I want to apply this filter to my matching conversations. So you'll notice I now have a classroom folder and I have a private comments folder that is nested under classroom. Control zero. And I'm going to create this filter. Okay, on the left-hand side, this classroom filter folder did not exist a few minutes ago. And you'll see that below that, that there is a private comments filter section. Why? There we go. Just lagging. So that there's only six of them in there. And so as I create labels through the creation of a filter, it is creating the, the filter folders. Or I can go to the settings cog, I can go to settings, and I can create those filter folder labels under labels in the settings. You can also edit and manage the labels and the filters in the settings as you choose. Okay, so now I've got my inbox. I'm on the left-hand side. I'm going to click on private comments. I'm going to be able to see those. The other thing that I do is I go to the settings cog. And I told you the default way that you would see your emails is to have those categories. Let's take a look at the inbox. Control zero. I believe that's the default. It's not how I use mine. No, maybe it's not. I could have sworn that it was. 
It is, huh, I'm gonna customize. It says default and click on customize. Oh, it does, I was right. The default is the tab. So I have social, promotions, updates, and forums. So it's gonna filter, this creates an automatic filter for you. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So an automatic filter is to click on the settings cog and you go to default and choose customize. And basically these are not labels in the sense that they are not the folders on the left-hand side. They're labels in the fact that they create categories of tabs. So they're treated differently. And you'll notice that when we went to the settings cog, I'm gonna click on the settings cog, settings, see all settings. And on here under labels, it has the labels, but then it also has categories that allowed me to choose, to select those. I don't believe I can create new categories. I think I can only create new labels. That looks correct. Um, but you can show and hide and manage your labels, your categories, and your filters up in the settings using the settings cog. Okay. Alice? Yes, ma'am. I have I have the three automatic categories which it, which are uh, private now right the primary one yes. the social one and the promotion what happens if I cancel these categories oh no, I don't use where that. are these emails going to go to well, well right now they're just all in a tab so they're just kind of sorted into a tab getting rid of the tab won't do anything it's kind of like just opening up a bag of M and M's and dumping the M and M's all over the counter they're no longer in the bag. <laughs> Now they're loose, but they, they, they didn't go away. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the setting cog. And will they not show up in the uh, inbox anyway? No, they will. They will. They just won't be in the tabs. So I use priority inbox. I use priority inbox. And I'm going to customize my priority inbox. So it says inbox type. I use priority. So, and I don't want important and unread. This actually messes me up because you'll notice there is no category for important and read. So if I read an email and it was important, there is no place for it to go in my inbox. That's a problem. So I usually change this from important and unread to just important. I mean, how many times have you opened an email and said, oh, I'm going to look at this later. I can't deal with this right now. And then if you don't switch it, it just disappears and you don't know where it went. So I, I'm gonna start that over again. I am in, I'm gonna just, yep. In the inbox, you see it says important and unread. It says starred. It says everything else is all your junk emails. Things that are not important and things that are not starred. So I come back up to the settings cog. I come down and I select priority inbox. This is what I use. I choose customize. And under there, I switch it from important and unread to just important. And then you'll see that I have a category called starred. So you remember what I did when I set up that filter for classroom. I said I want any of the private comment emails to be not important, but I want them to be starred. And what that's going to do is it's going to put them in that starred section. So they're not, Because otherwise, they'll all be in that upper section of important. So I make sure it's important, just straight up important, not important and unread, just straight up important. I do a section of starred, and then look what else I can do. I can choose one more where when I click here, it says that it's empty, and I go to add sections, select more options. More options allows me to check one of the folders that I have. And I like to have a folder of private comments. So now I have my private comments in a section. I have starred in a section, I have important emails in a section, and then of course, everything else. Please, please, please make sure you have important and everything else, otherwise stuff will get lost. Now I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna save the changes. There's a save button, make sure you notice that. So you'll notice I now have my important emails. I have my starred emails, and it says private comments, Google Classroom. What happened here? Why, why are they not down here? Why are they up here? Because they're starred. Remember what I was saying before? If I make them important and starred, then they're up in the important section. Watch what happens. 
I could be wrong. They change behavior and stuff all the time. I haven't cha changed my Gmail settings in forever. I'm going to come back here to my settings. I'm going to come back to my priority inbox. And I'm going to swap. I'm going to make this one more options, the private comments, and the third one, the ones that are starred. I'm going to save my changes. And I'm going to come back here. I have important. And then I have all those starred emails in my private comments. And then I have starred, which is now empty. Do you see how those switched? So it's the filters in Priority Inbox go in order. It checks for the first one, and then it checks for the second one, and then it checks for the third one, and then everything else, and then everything else. So please make sure that you have an everything else. So those are how I filter and manage my Gmail. Whatever emails are coming in, I'm looking for, for example, if the subject line says submitted late, colon, that's one of the things that comes in from Google Classroom. And I'm going to click that little filter icon up at the top. Under subject line, I'm going to do submitted late colon. I'm going to create filter. And instead of marking it as important and starting it and all those things, I say skip the inbox, go into a folder of late work that's nested under the classroom folder, and then I'm going to check that periodically. So that really helps me to keep my inbox clean. And then emails from parents. Every time I get an email from a parent, I will create a filter that if an email is from a parent email, their emails get filtered into a parent folder label that helps me keep from missing parent emails. Now, what I don't do is I don't skip those out of my inbox, right? The parent emails, I, I do not select skip inbox, go to folder because out of sight is out of mind, but I do have it go labeled so that when I go click on that filter folder, label on the side, I'm only going to see those emails from the parents. So at least once in a while, I should click on that and make sure I didn't miss any. I don't know about you, but I get so many emails, it's really easy to accidentally miss a parent email. So I have a folder for admin, I have a folder for parents, and I have different folders. They are labels. The labels are set as filters, et cetera. Um, so filter, label, folder, actually kind of all the same thing. Uh, and that really just helps me to manage my life a lot better. Is there a way um, sometimes you would see in the inbox a number and you know it's been unread? Yes. But you can't find it because it's, it's like in another you, page. You just search for emails that are unread? Yeah. How do you filter these? Well, a couple of ways. So first I can just come down here and mess with my inbox. And I can just choose unread. So now I have a section that's unread. You could do that permanently or temporarily. Right? So now I'm only going to see unread emails. And then I can just go back to my settings, go back to priority inbox, customize it, and change it back from unread to unread. And uh, woo, I do not do important and unread, I just do important. And then save. So you can just change up your view. You have four chunks when you use Priority Inbox, so four priorities that you can do on that. Um, or mm, I don't think I can do it from the filter. So pretty much that. That's the answer. Just put it on Priority Inbox and select Unread. So you can see these are emails I've not read. Speaking of which, I am a stickler for making sure that my emails stay unread if I haven't managed them. So when I, so for example, I read this email, I'm like, oh, this is important. I need to come back to it later. So then what I do is up in the toolbar, you see it says archive, mark it as spam. I wish that those were further apart, those archives, icons. Uh, I could delete it. I can mark it as unread, and that's what I'm going to choose. You can snooze it. You can make a task out of it, like get back to this. I love this, actually. So when I choose make a task, I get started. It's going to link me back to that email. So it's in my task bar on the side. Watch when I get rid of this. I'm into the inbox. I click on tasks. It's there. When I click on that, it opens that email. So that's a great way to, like, I need to come back to this email. You make a to-do list item out of it. That's encourage you to do that. That would be great. I'm going to delete it. Um, so making tasks is a great item. You can move it to the inbox if it is skipped the inbox and is archived or is in a folder. And you can add a label to organize it into a folder. 
But my point is I will choose, excuse me, this one, the mark as unread. That is my go-to. If I need to deal with it, I, let, I personally like to mark it as unread. That's my workflow. Choose your own. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.